Hey all you awesome viewers, I am the fun gal fun guy who was actually a fungus, and this is the stupid side. Welcome, welcome, one and all. I hope you're having a fantastic time, day, night, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we are going to be learning about Juneteenth, as well as critical race theory. I got a couple Vosh videos as well as another uh, educational video on what critical race theory is. Uh, I'm going to be doing some research on what that is, what Juneteenth is, what the name means, if it means anything, what the holiday is uh, celebrating or what it, it uh, tries to get us to uh, remember. Uh, because keep in mind, not all holidays are celebrations. Some holidays are, you know, memorials. Uh, we're gonna start with an article from the New York Times. Uh, this is, it is related because this has to do with, uh, I believe particularly Republicans trying to drive out people of color from having any sort of a driving force in the government. Lots of gravy. A pudding that you have with gravy. All right, you know what? Let's just talk about, let's just talk about food. For, forget this. Who needs to learn about this? Let's just talk about food. LaGrange, Georgia. Lonnie Hollis has been a member of the Troop County Election Board in West Georgia since 2013. Keep in mind, this is a recent article, June 19th, 2021. Today, as, as of this stream, a Democrat and one of two black women on the board. One of two black women on the board. Only two. She has advocated Sunday voting helped voters on election days, and pushed for a new precinct location at a black church in a nearby town. But this year, Ms. Hollis will be removed from the board. The result of a local election law signed by Governor Brian Kemp, a Republican. Previously, election board members were selected by both political parties, county commissioners, and the three biggest municipalities in Troop County, now, the GOP-controlled county commission has the sole authority to restructure the board and appoint the all-new members. The bottom line is that they don't like people that have some type of intelligence and know what they are doing, because they know they can't influence them. That is, that is true. People with power prefer to be surrounded by dumb people who will just agree with what they say and not question it. Republican state lawmakers have introduced at least 216 bills in 41 states to give legislatures more power over election. So these are, yeah, Republican state lawmakers that are basically making it easier for Republicans to keep power. Man, they are desperate, aren't they? Like, it, ju it just goes to show you, Republicans just hate democracy. This is insane. Like, you could, you could see it. It's in practice right here. Alrighty. You guys ready for a Vosh video? This this is the part of the stream where I get to sit down and and watch videos and then repeat the things that people say, adding absolutely no additional value. Consider Critical guys race theory. gender neutral. A lot of people don't know what it is. People get really angry over it. In fact, people got so angry over it that the President of the United States has made it a component of his platform to say that he wants to ban its teaching in federal institutions. So, Which okay. they have done recently in, uh, I think, a couple of states, states, which really sucks. The issue is that critical race theory is really just a term to describe a loose collection of academic theories to describe our understanding of racial inequality. The big issue that we often have with critical race theory is that we don't agree on the problem it's trying to solve. See, critical race theory is about, broadly, it's about analyzing power structures that relate to race. And that's really it. That's, I mean, that's super, super, super broad. It's about understanding that race is a component of a multilateral social system 
where certain groups are afforded more power over other groups and that that whole mess needs to be untangled for us to address racism. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much my, my understanding uh, of uh, what it was, is just basically criti critical race theory, or I guess as we should call it, critical race theories is just basically, hey, you know, uh, race somehow influences uh, the amount of power and success that some people have. Yeah, I, 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 okay, so I could see there there would probably be several components of it. One, explaining why why that is, how it happened, and how it functions, how it, how it works today. What some people may argue about more, I'm assuming, is something like how do we fix it or how do we un untangle it, which just starting with teaching people about it and that it exists, I think, definitely is a good step forward. Both looking like the comic book guy from The Simpsons. <laughs> Worst take ever. It, it's like the basic premise is really, really simple. The issue is a lot of right-leaning people don't really think racism exists. So they're never going to put critical race theory in an appropriate context. Yeah, when they stopped doing segregation stuff, then racism just magically disappeared. White people have some kind of internalized racial prejudice against black people in general. That's right. Some people actually believe that racism is natural, like a natural state. No. No, it's it's been proven. I'm pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure it's been proven that um you know it's learned. It's something that is learned. But generally speaking, non-white people in this country got the short end of the stick for a wide variety of cultural issues. We're not even talking. We're not talking about biology. We're just talking about like how the dice of history end up rolling. You know what I mean? because of things like systemic inequality and generational inequality. Generational wealth, yeah. Unfortunately, there's little to no trickle down because the people that have accumulated wealth hoard and, and keep that wealth uh, and they only give it to their next of kin. And then th that repeats and repeats and repeats. So the people that are born poor into poor families in poor areas are much more likely to stay poor and such is as with the uh, the rich people staying rich the marxist critical race theory powerpoint this this is an indication of systemic corruption on a global scale this is the downfall of western civilization right here like the the degree of severity assigned is so, so, so off. Oh, yeah. I also like the fact that conservatives are always the ones saying that teachers are like the agents of Marxist corruption, but now teachers are actually the victims of Marxist corruption. It's always either a direct attack on them or a direct attack on the children. It's like, it's, it's either like, oh, you're taking my freedoms away or, oh, you're trying to hurt the children. Yeah, yeah. Literally 1985, George Orwin... Animal Crossing, literally. I, I gotta, I gotta look more. I got, I gotta look more into it, you know, because as far as I can tell, it's, it's just basically telling people, hey, racism had a, a long-term effect on our society, and we need to do something to fix it. Went to school with one Let's of. Let's see if we can get any a, new information out of this. Of it, and Derek Bell, who also taught at Harvard, and I know what this is. This is something that we talk about in law school. It's just hard for me to imagine that people in elementary, middle school, and high school are actually teaching critical race theory. What they're doing is talking more about race and the problem of race, and I think that makes people very, very uncomfortable. Revisionist, okay, yeah. From what I hear, it's not revisionist, it's just adding more information about our understanding of America's culture and the way the system worked at that time. Possible that people actually believe that by not talking about it, that it that it erases it because, you know, we've been talking about no. Tulsa can't do that for as many years as I can remember. But why do you think people are just hell bent on erasing everybody? 
Well, you know, it's. I think you're you're right. It's almost as if they do think that by not talking about it, if I just don't look at it, it goes away. But of course, as you said, we know we've been talking about it in the black community, and these problems fester if you don't deal with them. I I think it's just a way of avoidance, thinking that they will be able to use the power of shutting people up to hide what happened in the past. But that that doesn't work, as you well know. Eventually, these things come out. I, I, I thought that sounded familiar. I thought that quote sounded familiar. I love Always Sunny. Oh my God, that's so good. But yeah, talking about this stuff is important. Like, it, it's, it's not divisive. What, what's it called? It's not dividing anyone. It's just talking about our history and how it affects things today. People need to know about this stuff. People need to be educated on it. We aren't aware of any schools That's true. in Alabama teaching the theory to children. Okay, so they're not aware of any schools in Alabama that are teaching the theory, which makes sense because, like they said before, it's something that's taught in law school. Conservative lawmakers say they think some recent efforts to talk about race and racism in the classroom are unpatriotic and divisive. Unpatriotic? Really? How is learning about the, the accurate history of your country and making it common knowledge, how is that unpatriotic? That's, that's the reverse of unpatriotic. That is patriotic. No, I seriously doubt that Republicans would not like critical race theory because it involves judging people by the color of their skin. I seriously doubt that, okay? Republicans love judging people by the color of their skin. Like, did you not see the article that I read when I first started here? Uh, and also achieving radical emancipation and anti-subordination more broadly is possible. Okay, so it is built into the theory that it's possible that we can uh, that we can undo the damages that have been done by systemic racism uh, in the run-up to and aftermath of the 2020 US presidential election opposition to critical race theory was adopted as a campaign theme by Donald Trump ew cringe and various conservative commentators on Fox News ew and right-wing talk show uh, talk radio shows okay so that in and of itself Funny, funny that the controversies regarding critical race theory are just about how Republicans uh, how, and D Donald, Donald Trump and conservatives uh, just didn't like it. Arizona judge declares ban on ethnic studies unconstitutional. Federal judge has issued a final judgment blocking the Arizona state law that prompted the dismantling of a Mexican-American history program in Tucson's largest school district. Okay. Law banned courses appearing to promote resentment toward a race or class of people or advocate ethnic solidarity instead of treating people as individuals. Okay, that's what we saw in the one, uh, the previous one. I mean, on one hand, I think, I feel like ethnic solidarity is important for, for some people, particularly like downtrodden people. I don't think white people need ethnic solidarity too much but i mean again w i mean we need solidarity in solidarity in the respect that you know we all need to come together for a common goal uh i can see how ethnic solidarity can uh, uh even if the intent is good it can kind of create a, a barrier oh so the teachers actually tried to I engage and collaborate with the parents okay um, they had to go to community events. They had to take it in, uh, in lieu of American history, but I assume that they're still also learning American history, just from, you know, a, a bit of a more progressive stance. These classes involved analyzing government, researching problems that students face in school, and coming up with solutions that were then presented to policymakers. Additionally, students engaged with history that included a variety of experiences, perspectives, and contributions, specifically those of Mexican-Americans, uh, that often were left out other United States history courses. That, yeah, so, alright, so the problem here is not with the problem of critical race theory. Critical race theory seems to be good and actually help students. Um, it, it helps educate students, it helps bring students of ethnic backgrounds together, it strengthens the community because they participate in, in community events, 
it leads to more graduations. It leads to, to higher education. I mean, that makes sense, right? If there's a system that is holding you down a certain way, if you learn about what your limitations are in the system and how that system affects you because of your background, then you know how to work around it. Or at least it's easier to work around it. All right, everyone, we are now going to learn about Juneteenth and its significance, okay? Today is Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. I don't know exactly what that means, but by the end of this uh, video... I mean, if we want to honor the up. end of slavery, then we should celebrate Juneteenth. Wait, that's what Juneteenth is? Juneteenth has only been recently recognized as an official holiday, but it's actually the longest running African-American holiday celebrating the Emancipation Proclamation. Here's how this once local- Oh wait, really? It's already been a, a widely celebrated holiday? Oh shit, look at that! It's already been a holiday! Just not a federal holiday! June 19th, commonly known oh, as yeah. Juneteenth, and formerly known as Emancipation Day or Jubilee Day, marks the day that federal troops arrived in- Oh, I've heard of Jubilee Day! I've heard of that. I didn't know what it was, but I've heard of it. The Emancipation Proclamation was issued on January 1st, 1863, which was said to be the day all enslaved Africans and Confederate states were to be set free. In reality, it didn't okay. end completely. In fact, there were still enslaved people in states like Kentucky and Delaware, as well as in Texas, where there wasn't much military presence, so slavery continued. Yeah, after the uh, uh, Emancipation Proclamation, unfortunately, uh, not all of the the slaves were freed and even when they were free they were made to be indentured servants which was were basically slaves it wasn't until troops arrived in galveston on june 19 1865 that 250,000 people were freed juneteenth reached new heights in 1872 oh, wow. when a group of black ministers and businessmen established emancipation park in houston texas so now 160 years later the story of juneteenth is still spreading Today, Juneteenth is celebrated everywhere through family cookouts, parades, festivals with residents, local businesses, and more. Texas was the first state to recognize Juneteenth as an official holiday in 1980. Since then... Okay, so it's been a holiday in Texas specifically since 1980. Okay, so it wasn't just like a, a holiday that people made up to celebrate a very specific part of history and it was like a cultural holiday. Since 1980, it's been a statewide holiday. It's been a state, uh, an official state holiday. 45 states in the District of Columbia have moved to officially recognize the day as well. In 2020, following the death of George Floyd, lawmakers reintroduced a bill to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. All right, so uh, they already tried to make it a holiday, uh, but it didn't go through, and then they did it again, and it went through. That's awesome. That's that's pretty freaking awesome. I'll be here. Critical race theory holds that the most important thing about you is your race. The color of your skin, that's who you are. No, that's not at all correct at all. Based on based on what I researched, it's um uh your environment is very important. Um Critical race theory begins right, from the assumption that racism occurs in all interactions. To see how this works, consider this thought experiment. Imagine you own a shop and two customers enter at the same time, one white and one black. Okay. Who do you help first? Two customers. If you the person that walks in first. To help the black person first, critical race theory would say you did so because you don't trust black people to be left alone in your store. That's racist. What? How does it? Wait, what? Makes sense. If you help the white person first instead, critical race theory would say you did so because you think blacks are second class citizens. That's racist too. I, I, I wish I knew where they were getting this shit from. Like their sources. Uh, I don't That's know. We'll check it theory. out after. Brewed up at Harvard Law School in the 70s, now part of the academic and media mainstream, it is also uniquely un-American because it rejects the core un Wait, un -American? of the American classically liberal Judeo-Christian value system. Okay, first of all, Judeo-Christian should not be in there because we're talking about government, right? It rejects core tenets of the American classically liberal judeo-christian value system how teaching more accurate history about about the country goes against country critical race theory questions the very foundations of the liberal order including equality theory legal reasoning enlightenment rationalism and the neutral principles of constitutional law it does okay. this because critical race theory proponents assume racism is present everywhere and always 
and they look for it critically until they find it. Okay, I mean, isn't that what you do when you, uh, I mean, when you're trying to solve a problem, you try to figure out where that problem is coming from and where that problem is present so that you can fix it? You want to find a problem first and figure out how it works so you can fix it. Critical race theory is then, in a very real sense, a counter-American revolution. But that's a positive, not a negative to those who subscribe to the theory. The American experiment was given a 400-year tryout, and it doesn't work. So let's scrap it. What are you talking about? The people that, people that subscribe to critical race theory say, fuck the American system, let's completely just get rid of it. What are you talking about? We're talking about finding how finding out how racism works on a massive scale in our country. Fi find out. Oh my God! They just don't like this because they they know that Repu the Republican Party really won't be a thing anymore if uh, if we get rid of systemic racism. I believe that this guy looks like he's about to cry. Are you gonna cry? Are you, are you theory cry? before it infects the no. brains of too many decent Americans, don't be bullied into thinking that you're racist when you know you're not. Anti-reality. Or that you're a victim when you know you're not. Defend yourself while you still can. I'm James Lindsay. Shut up, I don't care. Oh my god, that was terrible. In fact, that was so terrible, I have to take another break. Oh, hey everyone, thanks again so them. much for watching. If you, you like what you see, hit that like button, Aww, and click on my mushroom them. face to stay up to date with you all my videos. If you didn't Aww, like it, didn't have to go ahead and hit the dislike button. Why not? If you have any suggestions Aww, for content or just want to say hi, leave a comment, but keep it classy. That's it for now. See you next time. We could have kept them as a pet.